Hi, I am Hari Mantri Pragada. Today I will be showing you how to model a pre-combustion CO2 capture system for an integrated gasification combined cycle power plant or an IGCC power plant. We assume that you know how an IGCC power plant works as well as how the IECM interface works. If you don't, I we recommend that you go and see some of the intro videos or refer to our technical documentation. To start a new session, use the file menu or click the new session button on the left. Under the plant type, select IGCC and let us name this session as CO2 capture demo. Click OK. This will take us to the configure plant screen showing the base, base plant diagram. Under gasifier, the current options are GE quench and shell. For this tutorial, we will use a GE quench gasifier which is the default. Note that for an IGCC power plant, the base plant configuration already includes a particulate removal system as part of the gasification island. The base plant also includes a system for sulfur removal which is needed to protect the gas turbine power generator. The dominant form of sulfur is H2S and under H2S control, the current options are sulfenol and selexol processes. We are going to use the selexol process which can also be used to capture CO2. So under H2S control, let us select selexol. Next, under the CO2 capture menu, we will select the Sour Shift plus Selexol option. This brings up two additional pieces of equipment. A water gas shift reactor prior to the H2S removal, which is why this is called a Sour Shift reactor, and a Selexol CO2 capture system. In this version of IECM, there is also an option for CO2 capture using a chemical looping system, which is a new technology still under development. In future versions of IECM, there will be other options as well. Finally, let's configure the water and solids management systems by selecting a wet cooling tower for the power plant and keeping the default op options for slag and sulfur handling. Now let us look at some of the parameters of the base plant. Go to set parameters, which will take us to the overall plant screen. Click on the performance tab at the bottom. For an IGCC power plant, the size of the plant is set by the number of gas turbines. The default option here is 2. This note tells us that the parameters regarding the power plant size needs to be set on the power block screen. The other main parameter here highlighted in blue is the levelized capacity factor which is set to be 75%. We will use 75% for this tutorial. Now click on the fuel tab at the top to set fuel properties. The default coal type is an Appalachian medium sulfur coal which we will use for this demo. There are several other coals also available in the IECM database. But for IGCC plants, the choice of coals is more limited than for a PC plant. The reasons for that are explained in our user documentation. To understand how the CO2 capture process works for pre-combustion CO2 capture, let us first look at the diagram. For that, go to the Get Results screen, click on the CO2 capture tab. The first step in a pre-combustion CO2 capture process is the water gas shift reactor where CO reacts with inlet steam and forms CO2 and H2. This process occurs in two stages, high temperature reactor and a low temperature reactor. The syngas outlet from the shift reactor is rich in hydrogen and carbon dioxide and lean in carbon monoxide. This outlet goes to the CO2 absorber of the Selexol CO2 capture system. Here, 
CO2 is absorbed by the Selexol solvent and the solvent is then sent to a regeneration step where CO2 is released which is then sent for compression and storage. The CO2 lean solvent is pumped back into the CO2 absorber. The outlet syngas from this CO2 absorber is very rich in hydrogen. This goes to the power block for power generation. Now let us look at how to set parameters inputs for CO2 capture. Go to set parameters. Click on the CO2 capture tab. The first component you see in the process type is the water gas shift reactor. On this screen, you can adjust parameters pertaining to the shift reactor, such as carbon, carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide conversion efficiency, COS to H2S conversion efficiency, the amount of steam added in terms of moles of steam to, to moles of carbon monoxide. This is determined by stoichiometric considerations, but the user is free to change them. For now, let us use the default values. The other parameters on this screen are the maximum train CO2 capacity, number of operating absorbers, and the number of spare absorbers. We can also set the thermal energy credit, which happens because of heat recovery between high temperature and low temperature shift reactors. Next, we use the process menu to set parameters for the Selexol CO2 capture system. The first screen here is, the perf is that of performance. Here we can set the desired CO2 removal efficiency, the desired H2S removal efficiency in this stage of the Selexol process. The other variables are the usual train capacity and the number of absorbers and the number of spare absorbers. The other important variable here is, the C is whether a CO2 product compressor is used or not. And if it is used, the power requirement for the compressor. Next, we can look at the bottom tab of TNS configuration. Here we can set the CO2 final product pressure, compressor efficiency, and the energy used by the compressor. The other inputs are the CO2 transport method and the CO2 storage method. These are standard for all the CO2 capture processes in IECM, whether it is pre-combustion or post-combustion capture. CO2 transport and storage costs are treated as ONM costs in IECM and are discussed in detail in another video. Just like for other process sections, capital and O&M cost parameters can be changed for the CO2 capture process using these bottom tabs. The place to change the O&M cost inputs for consumables is in the overall plant screen. Before going to results, let's look briefly at the sulfur removal tab. Although the main purpose of this system is to capture H2S, the Selexol solvent is also capable of capturing other acid gases like CO2. So you see on this screen a CO2 removal efficiency parameter. Its default is set to zero. This means that this unit is designed to capture only H2S and COS, but not CO2. Note that if you increase the CO2 removal value here, the captured CO2 will follow the sulfur stream and eventually be emitted to the atmosphere at the sulfur recovery plant. Now that all the input parameters have been set, let us look at the results in the get results screen. Under CO2 capture, let's go to water gas shift reactor and look at the syngas composition before and after the shift reactor. We notice that most of the carbon monoxide entering into the shift reactor has been converted to carbon dioxide. The carbon monoxide concentration in the outlets in gas is very low, whereas the hydrogen and carbon dioxide concentration is very high. This stream goes to the Selexol CO2 capture process. Now let's look at the process type CO Selexol CO2 capture and look at the syngas before and after this process we notice that most of the carbon dioxide 
has been captured in the SelectSolve capture process. The outlet stream is now very rich in hydrogen which is sent to the power block for power generation. Like for other process sections, we can see the capital and O&M costs for the CO2 capture process. The cost of absorbers and other equipment is shown in the capital cost tab. The O&M cost screen shows the cost of solvents and other operational and maintenance costs. The total cost tab shows the annualized cost for the capture system. In order to see the effect of CO2 capture on the plant performance, go to the overall plant screen, click on the plant performance tab at the bottom. Here we can see the energy used by different components like Selexol sulfur capture, Selexol CO2 capture and the thermal energy credit from the water gas shift reactor. Also shown here are the net electrical output and the net plant efficiency. On the total cost screen and the cost summary screen, we can see the additional capital and O&M costs required for the CO2 capture process and its contribution to the overall plant cost and annual energy requirement. This concludes the demonstration of pre-combustion CO2 capture from an IGCC power plant using IECM. Thank you for watching.